India back in the medieval period, that is from the 8th to the 18th century, had different provinces ruled by different rulers. Not just that, the Indian subcontinent was known for its riches and resources across the world. So many invaders set their eyes on this subcontinent. But was it easy to invade the Indian subcontinent? Nope. Why? The subcontinent was guarded on all sides by natural barriers. The Himalayas fortified the Indian subcontinent in the north. The country was surrounded by seas on the other three sides. So no enemies from those sides. Whew. It was not like people got on ships and went to invade other countries, right? Wrong. It was so. There were a few kingdoms, like our very own Cholas, who had a strong navy at that time. And people used to invade countries using ships. But if you were a foreigner who wanted to invade the subcontinent and you didn't have a navy, there was only one other way you could bring an army through. It was through the mountainous passes of Northwest India. And do you know who used this opportunity? The Arabs. In the 8th century, the Arabs grew into a dominant military power in Central Asia. Arab general Muhammad bin Qasim rode through the mountainous passes and entered India through the northwest and reached the Sindh. King Dahir resisted, but Muhammad bin Qasim came down harder. King Dahir succumbed to injuries and died on the battlefield. After the Arabs, it was the Turks who got fascinated with the Indian subcontinent. By the 11th century, the Turks came in contact with the subcontinent. Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni invaded India several times. He is known to have plundered many temples. Mathura, Vrindavan, Kanauj, Somnath. But why was he plundering temples? Was he not interested in the wealth of India? Yes, the wealth. You see, that is the reason that led him to the temples. The temples had accumulated so much wealth and every time he came, he rode back with enormous wealth. By the end of the 12th century, invaders like Sultan Muhammad Ghori made their way into the subcontinent. Prithviraj Chauhan successfully fought off Mohammed Ghori the first time he invaded. Mohammed sustained injuries and rode back to Ghor. And when he got better, Mohammed Ghori rode to India again and met Prithviraj Chauhan for the second time at Tarai. And this time, he defeated Prithviraj Chauhan in battle. Ghori annexed the northwestern regions and made his general, Kutubuddin Aibak, the in charge of the conquered territories in India. Kutubuddin Aibak was earlier a slave. Over time, he rose to better positions, and after the demise of Sultan Muhammad of Ghor, Kutubuddin Aibak became the Sultan of the region. From a slave to a Sultan, what a man! Not just Kutubuddin Aibak, an entire line of kings who succeeded Kutubuddin were former slaves. Ooh, goosebumps. Many other famous sultans followed. Sultan Iltutmish, Razia Sultana, Balban, Alauddin Khilji, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, Feroz Tughlaq, Ibrahim Lodi. These are some of the famous ones. Ah, a long list. But it was not like these sultans changed every day. From Kutubuddin Aibak to Ibrahim Lodi, the last sultan, it was a period of nearly 200 years. All these sultans ruled from Delhi and collectively they are known as the Delhi Sultanate. The last sultan, Ibrahim Lodi, 
was at a standoff with the governor of Punjab, Daulat Khan. Daulat Khan invited a ruler from Kabul, Babur, to aid him in battle. Babur defeated Ibrahim Lodi and established the Mughal rule in India. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.